responsive three notes on mutations, and we're going to talk about some genetic disorders and pedigrees. Um, this is also applicable for honors students as well. So this is for both honors and non-honors students. So first, what is a mutation? Mutation is any change in DNA. So the order of the nucleotide bases, meaning the letters, any change at all. It can occur in any cell in the body. And remember from the cells unit that mutations can lead to cancer, which is uncontrolled cell growth. Mutations can be caused by mistakes during replication, mitosis, meiosis, or protein synthesis. They can also be caused by mutagens, which are chemicals that can cause DNA mutations, such as radiation, UV lights, cigarette smoke, that kind of thing. They can also even be caused by viruses. Now, I think mutations have a negative connotation, but they don't always have to be bad. This is a picture of one of my old student's cats, and the cat literally had a mutation to have thumbs. So mutations aren't always bad. All right, but there are two main types of mutations. Gene mutations, which tend to happen during DNA replication, which would just change the original DNA sequence. Um, this causes disorders such as cystic fibrosis, dwarfism, and sickle cell anemia. And then there's also chromosome mutations, which happen during meiosis, and they change the number or location of genes. Um, so we're looking at actual large sections of chromosomes which could affect multiple genes. This is like Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, Turner syndrome, that kind of thing. So gene mutations, um, two types we're going to talk about are point mutations, which is substituting one nucleotide for another. So it should say A-T-T-A-C-C, -T -T but instead it would say A-A-T-A-C-C. -A -A -C -C. So we'd switch that letter A. Um, this is how cystic fibrosis, um, which is a pretty serious genetic disorder, is caused by one letter being um, changed. Whereas a frame shift, though, is adding or deleting a nucleotide. And so A-T-T-A-C-C -C would be A-T-A-C-C. -C. That would show deletion or insertion or adding a letter. And we call this frame shift because remember, when we do protein synthesis, we read it in threes. So if we delete or add a letter, we're messing up the entire reading frame of threes, and that would mess up pretty much every amino acid in the protein. Um, so this tends to be a bigger mistake than this one usually. Now, chromosome mutations, though, are almost always worse than gene because they're affecting multiple genes. And here's three ones we're going to talk about. First is duplication. This changes the size of chromosomes and results in multiple copies of a single gene. So here, this purple gene here got duplicated, and now we have extra information. Translocation is when non-homologous chromosomes would um, exchange segments during crossing over. So two chromosomes that are not the same swap pieces, and now it's all just kind of jumbled up together. And then non-disjunction. This is when chromosomes don't separate correctly during anaphase, and so we would end up with one or three chromosomes rather than the two per cell, um, or however many that you need. You know, for us, we want 23 in every cell um, because we start with 46, but we could end up with 24, we could end up with 22. So in this case, we're starting with four, but when they split, these two split normally, but this one split unevenly, and three went here and one went here, and if either of these fertilized um, became a zygote, there would be some issues. And one example of that is Down syndrome. Um, this is an example of non-disjunction, the failure of chromosomes to separate. You end up with three copies of that 21st chromosome. All right, so that's kind of a background on mutations. Now we're going to talk through the five basic categories of human genetic disorders, the five basic types. And I'm just going to give you a very brief preface on this because you're going to do a genetic disorder research project for me. So there's autosomal recessive disorders, autosomal dominant, sex-linked, autosomal chromosome disorders, and then sex chromosome disorders. So the first three, we're looking at gene uh, mutations. The last two are chromosome mutations. So autosomal recessive disorders are caused by the presence of two recessive alleles on your autosomes, meaning one of your first 44 chromosomes. That means carriers do not show the disease, but they can pass the disease-causing allele to their kids. So an example is like you could have two parents that are completely normal, but if they both are carriers, they could pass, there's a 25% chance they pass on this disease to their child. And cystic fibrosis and um, PKU are examples of autosomal recessive diseases like this. Um, cystic fibrosis, um, you have um, a problem with a protein that breaks down um, mucus buildup and um, 
your lungs and other areas, and that causes some problems. And then PKU, you lack an enzyme that breaks down phenylalanine, which is an amino acid in a bunch of foods that you eat. So these can be very sneaky diseases because you could be carrying the trait and not even know it because you could be completely normal, and then you could accidentally give it to your child. Autosomal dominant um, disorders are caused by the presence of just at least one dominant allele in autosomes, and they're actually the less common than recessive. Um, and why would you think that is? Well, let's think. If it's dominant, that means to give it to your kid, you must have it. So it's not as much as a surprise. Whereas recessive, because you can be a carrier, people can be reproducing and not even knowing that they're giving it to their kids. So at least one parent has to have the disease in order to pass it on. So this is showing a parent that has um, one affected chromosome, or one, excuse me, one affected allele and then one normal, and then a parent who's normal. And they could have 50% of their kids be um, affected and 50% be normal. So they could still have unaffected children if one parent is hetero and then the other is homozygous recessive. So achondroplasia, which is dwarfism, is an example. If you've ever watched... Um, Little People, Big World on TLC, the two parents are heterozygous. So they have, which would be a different Punnett square than this, but if you fill in two heterozygous, there's a 75% chance of that they would have children that are dwarfs and then 25% chance that they would have non-dwarf children. And they have four kids and actually two end up being dwarf and two are not. So that's just an example of that. And then Huntington's disease um, is a dominant disorder that damages the nervous system, and it, it's kind of, it's a really sad disorder because it usually doesn't even appear until adulthood. All right, sex-linked disorders are caused by um, the presence of an allele, um, so a gene on an X sex chromosome. So colorblindness is an example, hemophilia, muscular dystrophy, these are all examples, and dad can be normal and mom can be a carrier, and then boys are going to get it instead of girls. The only way a girl can get it is if dad has a disorder too, because girls would have to have two copies of the chromosome. All right, autosomal chromosome disorders. This is often caused by non-disjunction or another type of chromosome mutation. But a non-disjunction, remember, it would be failure of your um, chromosomes to separate during uh, meiosis. So you'd end up with the wrong number. Um, causes an abnormal amount. An example is Down syndrome, which is our um, three copies of the 21st chromosome. But this can also happen with sex chromosomes, which would be non-disjunction of sex chromosomes or another type of chromosome mutation but your sex chromosomes. So you get an abnormal number of sex chromosomes. So Turner syndrome is right here. It's where you only inherit one X chromosome. So one of your parents didn't give you one. Kleinfelter's is where you get multiple X's. So you get a Y chromosome and then you may get two X's or three X's or four, um, which is pretty, can be pretty severe. All right, and then a pedigree is a tool or a chart that we're going to use to trace phenotypes and genotypes in a family to determine whether people carry diseases or traits and kind of see inheritance patterns. They're like family trees, but they just trace um, a disease or a trait. They can be used by potential parents or genetic counselors to determine the probability of passing on a disease to children if we can determine the inheritance pattern. And studying pedigrees can help scientists determine uh, whether it's dominant, recessive, sex-linked, or autosomal. So there's a notation you need to know. Um, first, we label each generation like so. So from top to bottom, generation 1, 2, and 3. And then we would number them from left to right. So this would be person 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And um, the squares are males and the circles are females. And a horizontal bar represents marriage. And rectangle, or excuse me, <laughs> rectangle. Vertical represents kids. So married, we've got one marriage here, we've got a second marriage, we've got a third marriage. These two kids are not married. And then this represents kids. So this first couple has four kids. Two are not married. This one is married to um, a, a woman from an outside family and they have three kids. This one's married to a man from an outside family and they have two kids. We also put the kids in order of when they were born. So this would be the oldest son, second oldest would be a girl, third oldest would be a boy, and then the youngest would be a girl. So they're organized in order of um, birth. Shaded means that you have whatever trait or disease we're tracing. Unshaded means you do not have it. All right, so we're going to talk through some different patterns that you can identify from these. And first is autosomal recessive. So most, this is the most common inheritance pattern for genetic diseases. The disease, though, is going to appear rare in the family. 
Males and females are going to inherit it equally because it's autosomal. And it can often skip generations, so a child can get the disease even if neither parent have it because they could be carriers. And examples are sickle, or cystic fibrosis, sickle cell, um, PKU, and Tay-Sachs. So here it is an example. Um, you can see it's very rare and it skips generations. All right, autosomal dominant, the disease is common in the family, so there's many affected family members because and male and females are equally likely. But the, and it's common because the disease can't skip generations. A child can't get it if both parents are healthy. Um, examples are achondroplasia, which is dwarfism, Huntington's disease, and neurofibromatosis. And there's an example, and you'll see it's common in both. And then you also see, too, because his daughter didn't get it, she must be homozygous recessive. She married a man who also is, so neither of their children get it because it can't just come out of nowhere. All right, sex-linked recessive. This is when the disease is rare in the family, so only a few affected family members would have it. It often skips generations because it's recessive. But because it's sex-linked, males are going to end up having it more than females. And affected fathers cannot pass it on to their sons. So you can never see a, see a shaded square giving it to another shaded square. And why? Because fathers give their sons Ys, not Xs. So if a son gets it, they have to get it from their mom. And we've talked about hemophilia, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and color blindness. So here is an example of that. All right, so how can you just look at a tree? Like if I hadn't told you this is sex length, how could you look at it and determine that it is? Well, first, if there are way more males than females affected, meaning shaded in, and usually it means it's sex length recessive. If not, if you can't really tell if it's way more, then look for two parents that are the same shade that have a child that's different from them. So either two shaded parents and an unshaded child or two unshaded parents and a shaded child. And you're going to label the child homozygous recessive and the parents hetero because that's the only way that this would be possible. And then if the child was shaded in, we're tracing an autosomal recessive trait. And if the parents are shaded in, we're treating an autosomal dominant trait. And there's a couple examples. So here's the first one. So first, are there way more males affected than females? No. We've got two boys and two girls affected, so it's probably not sex-linked, it's probably autosomal. But now we have to figure out if it's dominant or recessive. So, we find two parents that are the same shade with a kid who's different. So right here, are two parents that have the same phenotype with a kid who's different from them. We label the parents hetero and the child homozygous recessive, because the only way this is possible is if they were carriers and they gave it to their kid. Now, because the shaded is the recessive, that means all the shaded this has to be an autosomal recessive. So all the shaded are little r, little r. Now, all of the unshaded show the dominant trait, but we don't know if they're big r, big r, or big r, little r. So we look at them one at a time to figure out if we can determine it. So looking here, this child, let's say mom gives him a dominant, dad could give him either. So we don't know what his other allele is. Same with this daughter. Um, now that over here, we do know what this girl is. We know she's dominant, but then we know the only thing that um, mom can give her is recessive, so she has to be hetero. Also, we know for her kid to have it, she had to have given him a little allele. And then up here, we don't know based on these kids. And then here, we know that these are all hetero because that's the only thing mom has to offer. All right, whoops, did not mean to flash that before I told you the answer. But looking at this, um, we see that there's three squares to one circle, so most likely this is sex-linked recessive. And I always start labeling the squares first because they're the easiest. They're either um, X big RY or X little RY. Um, so all the shaded means they have it, so they have to have the recessive. And then all the unshaded are normal, so they're going to have the big R for dominant. Now, then I would shade this shaded in, I would label this shaded in girl because she has it, so she must have gotten two little R's. Now, every other girl has X big R, but we don't know the other, if she's a carrier or not. So we're just going to go through one at a time. First, starting up here, we know that she's X big R because she's normal, and she has to be X little R because her son has the disorder, so he must have gotten it from her, because remember, he gets his Y from dad. Here, we know that this person is um, hetero also because the daughter has it, so she must have gotten it from both parents. This one, we know it's hetero because that's all that dad has to give. Right here, we know it's hetero because that's all dad can give her. And same of here. And then that's how we can determine the genotypes. All right. And that's mutations, genetic disorders, and pedigrees.